Hello everyone and welcome to Learning Media Skills and today we're going to be continuing our series on how to edit video using DaVinci Resolve. Uh, one of the best video editors out there in my opinion at least and this series is really designed for people who are brand new to video editing or for people who are maybe migrating from another video editing software package to DaVinci Resolve follow along with these tutorials and uh, within a matter of a couple of days you will be flying all right let's start a new project uh, when you fire up the program you'll be presented with a screen something like this which shows you the few projects that you have already maybe started. If you're firing it up for the first time, you probably only see this one little square up in the corner, Untitled Project. And you could just cl double click on that to start your first project. You could right click anywhere in this area and start a new project. Uh, or you see the button down here, New Project. Let's click on that and the uh, sample project that I want to edit with you is one that I'm currently working on uh, for my real job and uh, it's called Better to Die Walking. So let's call it that. All right now the very first thing that you're going to want to do when you're starting a project is of course bring media from the hard drives that you have connected to your computer that you want to edit into your project. And there are a number of ways that you can do that in DaVinci. A lot of instructors out there in uh, YouTube land will tell you just go ahead and drop your media into this media pool. And uh, by the way, DaVinci opened up in the cuts page. This media pool is also available uh, on the edit page as well as the media page. You see it down here. So in these first three pages, you can find your media pool. So one way is just to drag and drop media right into that pool. Another way is to right click anywhere in that pool and go down to import media. And right away you'll see that it opens up a directory that shows all of the hard drives that are currently connected to your computer. And you can navigate to any one of these hard drives to search for the media that you want to import into your project. So we have some here. And I know that I have some media in this folder here that I want to bring into the project. There's a couple of problems here, though, of doing it this way, of importing your media this way. First of all, it's difficult for me to see the frames. Um, we could probably make these a little bigger to see, but I like to see the data as well. So it's hard for me to identify with these, what, three or 400 clips here, which ones I want to bring in. So I either need to bring them all in to the project or go at it uh, from another approach. The other reason why I don't recommend importing media this way, at least for the very first time that you're bringing media into your project, is what can happen is, let's just go ahead and select uh, 10 or 15 of these shots, go down to the open uh, button and you get this dialog box that says change project frame rate question <laughs> mark and uh, especially if you're new to video editing you might wonder well, well should I change or should I not change what, what should I do here why is it asking this well what's happened is that DaVinci set a frame rate by default when you first started this project when you launched this project for the first time DaVinci set a frame rate and that frame rate by default is probably the same frame rate that was chosen the last time the project was used. If you're using the project from the very first time, I believe that DaVinci defaults the frame rate to 24 frames a second. So just now when we tried to bring in media from my phone, the iPhone can often have a variable frame rate. So sometimes it might be something like 28.6 and the next video you take might be 29.5, you know, it, it can vary. And so right away, DaVinci is recognizing that the frame rate of these clips that you just selected is not matching the frame rate that DaVinci chose by default. So it, it's asking, do you want to change the frame rate to match the media that you're bringing in? And especially when you're bringing in phone media that can be all over the place, you do not want to set your project frame rate based on 
what da Vinci might see as the frame rate of the first media from your iPhone. It could be anything. And so you could end up starting your whole project in a, a very strange frame rate. And you don't want that. Because once you start a project, it takes that frame rate and that's the set frame rate for the entire project. And so this is one of the reasons why I do not recommend importing media this way. And this problem uh, can happen from, it doesn't have to be iPhone media. Uh, it can be a folder full of media that might be coming from a number of different sources, shot by different cameras, by different people even. And uh, so what da Vinci might end up doing is it looks at the first media clip in that folder and sets your whole project to a frame rate of like 30 frames a second when you know that the project that you're working on, most of the media was shot at film rate. And uh, once you set it here, it's done. It's set for the whole project. And so it's important to get this right, right from the beginning when you're starting a project. Let's hit don't change and let's do an undo to get back to where we were. So how should we approach this? What is the best way to start a project to make sure that we get this point right? Well, if you missed uh, lesson two, you might want to go back and, and take a look at that where we talk a little bit about frame rates and why it's important. But for today, let's just go over to File, go down to Project Settings, and let's make sure that this project is set for the frame rate that will match most of the footage that you will be bringing into this project. Now, because I was the video photographer, I happen to know that most all of the footage that I shot was sh filmed at 23.97, then that is the frame rate that I'm going to go with. And uh, so I can hit cancel because I know that frame rate is right. And now I could continue and bring uh, clips in this way and just choose don't change frame rate no matter what's coming in. In fact, you only get that dialog box once. After you make that first decision, it's just going to say, okay, that's the frame rate they want to go with, and it's not going to ask you again. But it is important to get this correct when you're first starting a project. So what is the best way to bring in media? I would recommend using the media tool here. It has been specifically designed to help you find the media that you want to bring into your project. Of all of the video editing programs that I've worked with, I have found this to be the best way to organize my media using this media page. And when we go to this media page, we see all of our hard drives showing up here. And as we navigate around these hard drives and go to the folders that we want to search for our media, we can click on any one of these and uh, all of our media shows up large thumbnails so we can see what we're working on. If we want to inspect them closer, we just click on them. We can bring it into a viewing place. We can see what kind of audio we're working with, scan through it, and decide whether this is a shot that we want to use very easily. If you were trying to do your sorting right within the navigation windows of your computer, whether it's a Mac or a PC, the other problem that you can run into is that some of these new camera codecs will not even show up with thumbnails. And uh, so you can't even see what uh, media you're working with. Well, here in the media page of DaVinci, you've got a wonderful tool that will help you find the media that you want to bring into your project. Now, before we start sorting out our media, what I would recommend that you do is go down to this lower section and uh, prepare this a little bit by creating some bins. Just right click on the master there, select new bin, and uh, let's create a number of bins that we can sort our clips into. The first one might be interviews. Another one might be graphics. We could uh, create a bin for music. We could create a bin for say B-roll. And that should uh, get us started. So as we're scrolling down here, if we come across some media that uh, we might be able to use in the project, the story is actually about a, a drought in Kenya. So here we see some thumbnails of uh, some dry desert looking uh, shots. 
So we'll probably throw these into B-roll. Now you could just drag and drop this into the folder like this, and it'll pop in. It actually, the B-roll bin actually opens up. So we can drag some more in there. Let's keep scrolling down. Maybe another desert shot. And uh, if you hold down the command key, you can select more than one shot here. You see that they highlight to let you know that they are selected. And uh, so let's just drag those down into our B-roll. Let's grab a few more here. And uh, this here is the actual interview. So let's uh, switch to our interview bin, drop her in there. But here's some more B-roll for that story. And all of this will work for the story. And right down to there. So we've got some B-roll. Now, I know that I shot some more footage using my iPhone that I need to use in this project. So I'm going to go back to my hard drive here, go to the folder that I have most of the media for this project located in. I see we have a folder here called iPhone Media. So let's open that up and search for those shots that I took with the iPhone. Here they are here. Just to keep them separated, I think I'm going to create another bin and call it iPhone footage or shots and open that up and let's just drag and drop these down to that folder. All right, that uh, is how you import media into your project. Now, before we leave, there's one more thing that I would like to show you that may help you in terms of being able to edit your videos in real time. If you are working with media that is using a very high compression rate, for example, H.265 or some of the other new camera codecs that might be using a very high compression rate, or maybe you're working with 8K video, if they're very large files or if they're files that need to come in very quickly to your computer, you might find it to your advantage of moving all of your media over to a very fast SSD drive. I'm going to put one up on the screen here, the Extreme SSD by SanDisk. I've been using that for oh, a year and a half ever since I started working on DaVinci and have had no problems with them. And uh, the transfer speeds, especially of the latest ones that you can get, are 2,000 megabits per second. And so this will really help you if you're working with those files that uh, you need to have a very fast transfer rate. And there's a tool here that uh, DaVinci provides you that can easily kind of consolidate all of the media that you've just imported into your project and send it over to one of these SSD drives. Like I say, it's totally optional. I like to use this step because uh, I often am pulling media from maybe five or six different hard drives uh, of archived material that I've used over the last few years. And I like to have it, first of all, all on one drive. And secondly, I like to have it all on a really fast drive. And that really helps the edit process. So once again, totally optional, but I want to show you this. I think the reason why I'm emphasizing that this is totally optional is because um, there have been some issues with this tool. Uh, DaVinci, I think, is still working the bugs out. It doesn't work with all camera codecs. I've had it run up against some problems with some of my older camera codecs, and I don't think it likes H.264. And so if when you try this, you run into some problems and it fails on you is probably because DaVinci just doesn't like some of the codecs that you're trying to bring in. And you may want to revert back to a manual process where you're going to your computer desktop and dragging and dropping some of these media clips over to your SSD drive in a manual way. That's what I was doing before I discovered this tool and uh, it can really help your edit. I, what I would usually do is bring over all my interviews and uh, maybe some of the larger B-roll clips uh, over to an SSD drive manually. But here, let's give this a try. It's called Media Management under the File menu. All right, so basically what this Media Management tool does is it collects all of the media that you have imported into your project from, say, five or six different uh, sources, hard drives, 
and brings them to one location, and in this case, preferably a very fast SSD drive. Let's uh, choose the entire project. Uh, we see down here that uh, DaVinci calculates how many gigabytes this is going to be. One tip here is to make sure that the SSD drive that you're sending this to has lots of room on it, much more than what you're given here. And that way, if you have some very large files, uh, whether it be the, your interview files or very large 8K files, it's not going to have any problem struggling to find placement for those large files on these SSD drives. So that's one good tip. Let's use all media. Let's select preserve hierarchy in case you have happened to bring in folders within folders within folders and uh, you can determine how many you want to go. Let's say three. And uh, then let's also click relink to new files. So that way when the process is finished, it's going to link to all of the files now on your SSD drive. Now I should point out that this media management tool is really designed to archive your project once your project is finished. After you've finished your edit, you want to archive it and put it on the shelf. Uh, well, this is one way to collect all of the media that you ended up using for your project and just collects that and saves it as a standalone project that you can archive for later. And when you do it that way, you'll choose other options here. And once we have finished editing our project, we'll come back to this media management tool and actually walk you through the process of archiving your project once it's finished. All right, so I think we're good to go. Let's hit start. Now, this can take a little bit of time. You know it is 124.5 gigabytes in this case. And uh, even though your SSD drive is very fast, the drives that you're pulling media from may not be. And they could be very slow external drives. And so this is going to take a little time. You might want to go grab a coffee and come back. We'll put you on pause for now and come back just as it's finishing up. All right, it's just finishing up here now, and uh, we didn't have any problems with the clips that we selected, and uh, so we should be good to go. And uh, let's go over to our interview, click on our interview, and check over here, and we see that it is now accessing this clip from the Extreme SSD drive. So that's great. Let's uh, move over to our edit page and uh, just drop that clip down into our timeline. And we can see that it has absolutely no problem, no stuttering, no stopping. It plays it in real time and that's what we're looking for. That's the sweet spot. Don't have to go up and use proxy files or change the resolution. We can play it right from the SSD drive with no issues. All right, well, I believe that does it for today's lesson. I hope that you uh, found it helpful, and if so, give it a like. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And we'll see you next time here at Learning Media Skills. So long for now.